Last week, my wife took me to Vegas to see you two at the Sphere. Uh, it was for my birthday. I had not intended to do any type of like review or critique. However, the experience was so like, how, how shall I say, overwhelming that uh, I feel inclined to share the experience with you. So here's my brief review of you two show and the Sphere venue itself. What do you think? It's exciting. I'm Fox Sellers. Welcome to my channel. If you would, please click the like, click the subscribe. That way you'll be informed of future videos that I share just like this one. All right, so let's start with the venue itself. So anywhere nearby, you can see the sphere and they seem to promote different things are going on or, you know, they, I think they have other things going on, but the image that they have up on, especially at night, I mean, it just, it's, it's so made for Vegas. It just blows up with this just glowing excitement and, and just really unique artistic feel to it. Now going into the venue itself, this this place is is pretty amazing. I mean, everywhere you look, there's just really cool, you know, aesthetics for the architecture itself. It's gargantuan. It's just like this massive, massive thing, and it looks very raw. Don't you almost feel like you're you're at some sort of wartime hangar of, of sorts? That's that's rustic and old looking, but uh, there's. There's not a bad seat in the house. Here's one of the things we were thinking about. Because when we looked at tickets, the cheapest tickets were about $500, $600 for like the worst seats. And then the best seats were somewhere like kind of in the, in the $1,200 range. So we were a little hesitant to even want to buy tickets. We're like, is it really worth it to, to do this? I'll tell you this. I would say 20 seconds into the first song, and then the visuals come up. I immediately, the thought in my head was, oh yeah, this is worth it. This is definitely worth it. And then I even thought to myself, I'm like, I would have paid $1,200 for this. This is unbelievable. And that's just like seconds into the first song. Now, when the first song comes on and opens up, the, the lights and just the, the technology of it was so like, I don't want to say in your face, but like so consuming that I, I felt a little emotional at the time. I, I felt like just a, you know, a little teary-eyed. I'm kind of like, this is kind of a big deal. Whoa. And I remember when, I, when we left... I remember I mentioned it to my wife and my wife said to me, she's like, oh my God, I felt the exact same way. I, I didn't want to sound all, all like emotional and nonsensical, but yeah, I'm glad you said it first. So it, it, the technology of it alone is just something that just overwhelms you when you're in there. For every song, the, the, the visuals are pretty awesome, but there's just some that really jumped out at you. It's like, this is what, like, you would look up at the dome and you will be completely lost just looking and, and you you actually need to have pretty good balance because when you look up you're not sure where you're looking anymore because the animation or the, you know the the digital effects that they're showing you are just so some of them so bizarre but so beautiful and because it's a dome you you kind of lose track of where you're looking and so you, you need to take breaks from looking up and looking down at the band, but it, it's, it's, it's an experience that is beyond explanation. Now, I had never been to a U2 show. This, this was kind of like a bucket list item. So I was very excited. And then when I saw they were playing at the Sphere and everything, I'm like, oh, I got to do this, right? So I wasn't sure what to expect. I assumed that U2 was going to be solid and you know have a, a very tight show. And I think they exceeded my expectations as far as that goes. They, th I would say their musical talent is, I mean, you go to shows and you're like, oh, they're, they're kind of a studio band, you know, the, the show is great or whatnot. I mean, and then others were like, yeah, they're okay. And then you go and see them in a show and you're like, oh, that's a concert band. They, they really know how to play live. That's amazing. These guys are like both. They, they're like super, super tight, yet... They're, you know, the, their music is, I mean, as, as any U2 fan knows, it's very beautiful, but it, it has this really 
just across the board melodic sound to them that worked very very well with the visuals and overwhelmed us as well the really great thing too is like you know i'm 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 a fairly big u2 fan so i know all their songs for the most part um uktum baby oh and by the way this was supposed to be themed as uktum baby and and they're going to do like the whole album and they and they do however uktum baby's not like my favorite album, I mean, maybe it's in the top five. I mean, they got a lot of really great albums, you know, Joshua Tree, and uh, I've, I've always liked Pop and Zuropa, War, you know, all those. So this is, the, I mean, Nocturne Baby's maybe in the top five. So I'm not um, 100% familiar with all the songs on that album. I mean, I have the album, I've played it all the way through. W- what they did in this concert was they played the songs with a new kind of feel to them, you know, a, a, an updated uh, approach. And so some of them I might have slightly not recognized right out of the gate, but all of them were kind of like a new experience for you, for for the most part, you know, with the exception of the the tried and true songs. But uh, honestly, like, I've not heard these songs played this way. Now, the way they did this was, it's mostly Uktum Baby, and then what they do is they, for each show, just to make them all, all a little bit individualized, they pick another album and then they do like, you know, three to five songs right in the middle of those. And for this show, they picked War. They were like, we want to go old school. Here's War. And they played a bunch of songs off there, which is just a fantastic album. So like, you know, there was a nice little treat in there. And then they go back into Uktum Baby. And then at the end, they have... Uh, some of their encore classic, you know, songs that you know, mostly from Joshua Tree. Now, for me, the, my favorite part of the show was when they did the song Trying to Throw Your Arms Around the World, which, you know, which is off Octoon Baby, of course. And they did this really cool thing where the 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 effects and everything were dialed down a bit. But they had this giant cord that started going up the side of the dome and then draping down. It almost as if they were like bed sheets that were all tied together. And at the top of it, they created this big image of a balloon. And the whole time they're doing the song, Bono is holding the end of it and walking around singing that song. Now, I wasn't super familiar with that song um like i said before they you know they they kind of changed him up and there's a different feel to some of the songs so it 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 caught me off guard for a second but during that song and 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 by the way the the balloon and just kind of everybody looking up with this you know childlike feeling that was going on i had this ginormous smile on my face as i'm as i'm watching this and i turn over to my wife and she had the same thing going on. She's looking up in the sky and she just, I just, the, the glow of happiness on her face made it so that this was honestly the best part of the concert for me. And I remember looking over and then that made me smile and she looked at me and we smiled and then I looked back up and I, I had such a visceral experience from just that one song. And I got to experience that song in a new way too. So that was the highlight for me, but the highlight could, for anybody could be a different part. I mean, there was so many like amazing moments that you, they had this moment where the, you know, all the digital effects, you, you felt like you were tripping during this one shot. And then when you got near the end, they show Vegas and it caught me off guard a little bit because the view that they showed you, it looked like it was just a camera aimed outside and you're watching what's going on outside. And I had to stop for a minute. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of like, wait a minute, is this r- real time right now? Like, is that what's going on outside on the streets out in Vegas? And I kept staring at it, trying to figure that out. And eventually I realized, I'm like, okay, this is pre-recorded. I don't know, wait a minute, this might be a digital effect. And it was really tough to distinguish until all of a sudden they started reverse constructing all of Las Vegas, and it was an amazing visual. And they did it, I I saw somewhere that they had said that like they deconstructed Vegas at the speed of, I mean, in the order each building was created. 
until finally Vegas was a desert all over again. And it was really an amazing visual as they're playing. And this was near the end, so they had some of their marquee songs during that time. And it was just an amazing, amazing visual until finally, it's like daytime in the desert. And because the the technology of it and, and the the lighting was so massive and realistic, you felt like you were outside and it was dawn and the light was everywhere and everything was bright. I mean, you could look around at everybody and everything was all lit up, but you did not feel like you were in a dome. You felt like you were at an outdoor venue watching you two. It was, it, it, it's almost unexplainable, but I, th- I, th- I did my best. And then finally, when, when we left, you know, I'm looking around and and, and it's packed trying to get out. You know, we had to, we had to go through, I think to the Venetian in, in the walkways that led to the Venetian. Uh, I'm looking around at everybody, you know, people can get cranky after a show. People have been drinking or grumpy or whatnot. Everybody had a huge, huge smile on their face. Everyone was lit up. Everyone was just like completely content. And I mean, I can't emphasize this enough. It was well worth the money well worth the experience. It's probably a concert going experience I'm going to never forget for the rest of my life. So do I recommend going to the to see you two at the sphere? You bet your ass I do. Do I recommend seeing anything at the sphere? Yeah. Yeah, I think anything you see there would probably be pretty amazing. I look forward to whatever else is going to be there next. Uh, you know, the, the, it's ideal for like a band like Coldplay, but I would, I'd love like the Verve to get back together and be there. But, um, I'm sure a rock band, like a hard rock band could do it, but it, it's, it's definitely ge- geared towards something that's a lot more melodic and, and beautiful, uh, for the most part. But man, that is one monster piece of technology that was a, a fantastic experience. So that's my review of U2 at the Sphere in Las Vegas. I want to thank you for watching. If you would go ahead, click like, also click subscribe. You'll get keyed into videos just like this in the future. And I want to thank you for watching.